How's it going guys? It's Snugs and today we're going to talk about the Fire Trap Blade Shield Hybrid Assassin. This is one of my favorite characters. I absolutely love this character. Um, I'm currently playing a solo self-found version on another assassin. So the, the, the one that I'm about to show you is a trade ladder assassin, right? Uh, so if you want to see it kind of being birthed from the start, uh, stop by my Twitch, twitch.tv slash slash it's underscore snugs, and you can see what we're working on. I'm actually going to show you that assassin at the end of the video. That way you know maybe if you're planning on doing this character as a ladder starter, kind of what to start with, what to look for to kind of work into the gear. That's going to be your end game gear. But anyway, let's get started on the gear. By the way, I love how this looks. I think it looks fantastic. Anyway, onto the gear. Last Wish. This is a controversial choice. I personally like this choice. So if there's one thing that we have to take into effect, uh, take into account, the enhanced damage is pretty high on this, right? 349 is kind of a meh roll. It's very expensive rune word, um, but there's other options. I'll get into that in just a second. But this has magic find. It has ignores target's defense, which is a huge thing, by the way. Almost all the weapon options that you are going to want to look at have ignores target's defense. That way we don't have to worry about attack rating, essentially. But the big thing with this for me is the Might Aura when equipped. That way, that allows us to use an Act 2 Mercenary and equipped um, Infinity. Okay? So, on our while we're, while we're here, let's just show the uh, the Mercenary real quick. It's a Shaft Stop with an Um, Melee Splash, IAS, uh, and then a bunch of ED. Uh, it's a Steel Shade with um, also Melee Splash. I need you to change this. I pieced this together. Anyway, it's got IAS, Melee Splash, and then ED. Uh, Infinity. Um, it's a one-off perfect and minus 45 enemy lightning res. Remember, guys, that minus enemy lightning res on your Mercenaries Infinity does not matter. So if you're looking at buying one of these online or trading for one of these online and the guy's like, Oh, look, it's almost perfect minus lightning res. That only counts for the person holding the Infinity. Okay, that's a common misconception. So all you care about is the base that it's in and the enhanced damage. Okay, guys? Anyway. So Last Wish, it's super, super controversial, but I think that it is the best in slot. Personally, it's crazy expensive, uh, but it's got Might Aura, so that way it allows us to use uh, the Act 2 Mercenary and have Infinity on it. Uh, it's got a bunch of Magic Find, it's got Crushing Blow, it's got ITD. Um, some people, it's also got Life Tap, which I think is great. This, it is so hard to kill this character. It's ridiculous. I, 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 it, it's unbelievably hard to kill this character. We have Life Tap and we have Phoenix. Uh, but anyway, guys, so that's going to be basically that. If you don't want to do this, if you want to go a little bit cheaper, you could go with Natalia's Claw. That's a really good option that has North Target's defense as well. If you don't want to go that, you could maybe go with Death. I think Death is a super solid option. On my other Assassin that I'm working on right now, I'll probably be going Death soon. Um, for the Vex and the Goal in it, I think it's a super solid choice. Two Open Socket Shaco with a Cham and an Um. Uh, pretty much best in slot. There are some other options here, but I think pretty much Shaco's your best choice. Uh, I would go with Cham, definitely. Um, uh, this this the, One of the problems with this build is it's actually a little bit harder to get resistances on. So that's why you've got the Um there. Uh, and we don't want to be frozen. Super annoying. It slows us down. This is a majority a running build. We've got some little tricks and we are using Enigma, but for the majority we're running. We've got a 2 to all skills, I Lord's Wrath, ridiculously expensive, but actually I need that 2 to all skills to get to level 40 blade shield um, without uh, without bow, basically. So that helps. I can do it with bow. So I could use a 1 to all skills here and save, you know, the 15 high runes or whatever it is. Anyway, I've got a Stone and Jordan uh, with PDR, very nice. Wisp Projector with extra faster run walk, a little bit low on the stats on this one. But it is what it is. Uh, Enigma, pretty nice roll. Arachnid's Mesh. Uh, the reason mainly that we're going to want this here is because it's got Piercing Attack for the lulls. But yeah, you know what I mean. It Piercing Attack, Pog. Uh, but anyway, the main reason is the one doll skills here. That's that's the biggest thing. War Traps with 10 all res, pretty sick ones. And then Lang of Hands with all res as well. The, unfortunately, the damage to demons is a little bit low, but... We'll take the all res. So the theme here is we're getting all res where we can on the gear. We're, we're using a lot of corruptions because unfortunately all res is, resistances are a bit harder to get on this gear. 
um, on this build. Phoenix Monarch, Vex Vex Low Jaw, freaking amazing shield. Minus 28 fire, uh, enemy fire resistance, so we're just getting a straight up a ton of damage. We have the Redemption Aura, which is going to keep us constantly full of mana and life. Makes us very, very hard to kill. We also get maximum light res and maximum fire res, but the thing about this is that our reses are a struggle on this build, so we're probably not going to hit those anyway. You could, but you would have to sacrifice damage, basically, or magic find, or, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, we also get a bunch of enhanced damage on here, so that's nice as well. So that's buffing, again, our blade shield damage. And we got a bunch of random, you know, Geet's Fortune, traps, uh, FHR one, a little bit of life, gold, life, FHR, life, life. Uh, we got a 16, 18 torch and a 17, 16, 9 Annie. And then we've got basically res charms down here and then a little bit of magic find. I'll probably replace this at some point. But I'm not really playing this character much. Um, because I'm playing the solo self-bound almost exclusively. This is not solo self-bound, by the way, guys. Anyway, I've uh, got a random trings in there. Sweet. Forgot about that. But anyway, on to skills. So you're going to max your fire blast, fire blast, max your wake of fire, max your wake of inferno. You're going to max your blade shield. Now, what you choose to do at the end of the points is kind of up in the air, but I'll show you after we cover the other skills. You're gonna go one, one, one. We are not using a claw, so claw mastery is just a prerequisite to get down into fade and uh, burst of speed. Burst of speed is the main reason that we're using uh, this tree. You don't even have to put a point into fade, honestly, in this. And you're gonna proc it an awful lot because of that last wish, that 6% um, chance to cast fade. But anyway, back to the skills. Uh, so I've been maxing Blade Shield, and then I've been putting my secondary, my last points into Blade Fury. Uh, you don't have to. Some people prefer Blade Throw, but I like Blade Fury. Um, I feel like it does a little bit more DPS, and then absolutely nothing in a martial arts, guys. Uh, and if I miss anything, I do these all in one take, guys. So leave it in the comments. I will respond eventually. Might be a day or two, but I will respond. All right, guys. So I'm going to show you a quick run and i'm going to show you just blade shield damage i'm going to show you just blade shield damage before i start using traps show you how much damage this does and why we use blade shield little gc action So, Might Aura basically gives us an additional 200% damage. So basically, this weapon is being buffed by 549% damage. It's huge. That's why I really, really prefer Last Wish. Some people, again, might find the Fade proc annoying, but this is without using traps, without using fire traps, guys. This is just pure blade shield. Little Nats boots. One of my favorite boots. Just slam them for all res. Love it. Anyway, so I'll start using I'll start using traps up here. Also, guys, Infinity will break some fire immunes. It won't break the Death Lords, but it will break Doom Knights. Notice how they don't have a res. So in T1 and T2, when we have a million of the Death Knights, it's gonna break them. So Infinity, I would say, is crucial on this build for mapping. There's also a little trick. You can teleport and then open your inventory. We can do that to get the max value out of our Enigma because we can only warp every two seconds. So this is gonna be a longer video. I'm gonna show you the early stages of this build as well. Little bone snap. We'll check out the rare ring, why not? Also going to take you into T4. In my opinion, this may be the best T4 build in the game. It might be. So this build struggles with faster hit recovery and resistances. So we've got our Wake of Inferno and Wake of Fire. On bosses, I usually use Wake of Inferno. It does more single target damage. 
So I put those down, and I'm going to wait for him to pop up, and then I'll also blade, blade Fury him at the same time, and he instantly dies. Also, one thing that's really cool about this, the way that I've got this set up, is I have 332 Magic Find, and I do ridiculous damage. Uh, I'm at the 29, so 28 faster hit recovery breakpoint, so it's a pretty low, guys. But because we've got life tap, we've got so much sustain from Phoenix, I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of hit recovery. Um, you don't have to choose to do this. You can make up for this in more grand charms, more small charms, stuff like that. Uh, you could put a shale in your Shaco. There, there's a bunch of options if you want to get that hit recovery up. I'm at 60 fire res, 30 cold res, 64 lightning res, and 13 poison res. So the res aren't bad, but they're also not great either, to be completely honest. Go over here, repair real quick, and then I'm gonna open a T4, and we're gonna I'm gonna show you what a T4 does, or what this does to a T4. It's absolutely stupid in T4. All right, pretty horrible Nats boots there, and let me find a T4 real quick. All right, I'm not gonna run the whole thing, but I'm gonna show you at least probably over to the boss how ridiculously strong this is. Anyway, so you start laying down your traps. You wait for them to go in. Nice, F war pike. Also, the little flares will get broken. We proc fade there. But wait till we get an entire screen full of enemies and you're gonna just see it all basically just like a wave die. Very, very strong. Look at this. It's absolutely melting Hell Wisps, one of the uh, more tanky mobs in the game. Now, one thing I don't, that I do dislike about this build is that there's so many off screen kills, you have to be very careful um, about, especially not playing with sound. There are an absolute banana. So you can kind of do a Z pattern where you run forward and then kind of to the side and back a little bit. That's going to help you out um, with hopefully not getting, you know, lost drops, lost iron, and stuff like that. A little bit tankier bobs here. They're physical immune. We'll take them out, no problem. And this is amazing against bosses. Here's a good pack. Absolutely obliterated. Silly stuff. So if, if you kind of like, you, there's this like motion to it where your traps start moving forward and you can kind of like ride the wave almost. This build will consistently do T4 solo in under 25 minutes, guys. It's very, very strong. Blades of Ice can do, you know, 25 minute clears as well. But what I've noticed about Blades of Ice is because the AoE is so much smaller than this, you don't actually kill everything. You leave a bunch of packs left over if you do like that quote unquote 25 minute clear. This literally will kill everything or pretty much everything at least. We have a ton of faster run walk. We're super fast. Look at that. Hell Wisp just getting obliterated. It's beautiful. Here's a really nice pack. Look at that. Look at that, boys. Everything's dead. Get our blade shield back up. It went to sleep. Our blade shield and our blade fury does so much. Honestly, we could do T4 without even fire traps. That's truly a hybrid build. Hybrid build with a ton of magic find, a 
good amount of mobility, actually, because of Enigma and a lot of faster unlock. It's not great. It's not the highest mobility build ever, but, you know, it gets the trick done. Instead of CTA on swap, what you could do is you could actually put a teleport staff if you want to really um, teleport quickly. It's very expensive to do so, but that's what I'm doing on my solo cell phone. Because I do not have Enigma yet. Getting closer, though. And melt it. There we go. Bang him up real quick. There we go. Sometimes you gotta, you, you know, if you got an immune in there that's not broken, it's good to just kind of target him a little bit. There we go. Dead. It's a good chance we're gonna have our boss over here in this corner. So I'm kind of straying off the pack or off the line a little bit. down. We're going to get our nice little wave started here. And there's an Umrun. Nice. I like it. I always find something good when I'm making the videos. Every single time, we found something pretty bog. head back towards that right wall and there's an ist as well holy shit holy guacamole dang let's let's kill a little bit man we're we've got some good rng going on i guess that's mail nice just creates this whole sea of fire that literally takes the entire screen out. I find it very, very satisfying. I really enjoy this build. I may ladder start next uh, next ladder with this. I'm thinking about it. I might do Necro again because it's so versatile early, but this is a little bit harder to start on. I will admit, you're locked into certain areas a little bit more. It's a little bit more tedious feeling. Um, unless you're playing with a group this one's a little bit trickier. All right, we got our boss here. So we'll do our normal, normal kind of clean out the sides and then spiral in. Kill a bunch of stuff. I mean, this really, really does T4 very, very quickly. It's it's really good in T3 as well. It's good in all the tier maps, but it really shines in T4 um, because of just the mass AoE. Anyway, I'm going to show you this, guys. We're going to clean this out and we're going to lay some Wake of Inferno on him and watch him die. Dead. Easy T4, boys. I mean, it's, it's ridiculously strong, guys. It's expensive, but it's ridiculously strong. This is maybe my favorite build right now. It's just so satisfying. It's great in cows. It's great everywhere. We'll do a little bit more, and then we'll we'll swap characters, and I'll show you the uh, the SSF, the starting character. We'll talk a little bit more about it. Anyway, we got an instant and um off that run. Let's see if we get any skillers or anything. Not looking like we do. Six percenter, not horrible. Don't need it though. All right, we get one more for the boys. There we go. All right. So I'm gonna switch characters here. We're gonna go over to my level 90 solo cell found. 
and I'll show you what we got going on this guy. All right, so these are some options that I'm using. It's, it's harder to balance the damage, the damage of blade shield and fire traps. We can get a lot of fire trap damage early on. That's not hard. The hard part is getting our blade shield to actually do some damage early without a bunch of fancy expensive gear. So one really good option is Bartux. This one slammed for over ED. Again, this is solo cell found. The only thing that I did, I cheated a little bit and I brought a torch nanny in. My stream knows that, we've, we've talked about it. But anyway, um, so Bartux is a really great way of doing it. Uh, it has decent onboard damage, but the big thing is you're also buffing your, your trap damage as well. We're getting life per hit. Uh, we're getting some attack rating. We're getting strength dex. It's just a really solid common starter item. I mean, I think I've already dropped three or four of these. So you'll, you'll probably, you'll end up um, farming them. I've got a Shaco. This is the first one that I found. We did slam it. It got life gained on hit, uh, which I actually, which is pretty good for this build. And then I Larzic Dick for the one socket. So we'll be rocking this for a while. I've got a three to traps with six mana leech. Um, this, unfortunately, C and C. I was trying to get the one to all skills three to traps, which actually could potentially be end game. Uh, High Lords, I generally think is better in this slot, but for now, this is not bad. Raven Frost, haven't touched it because it's my only one. And if I lose it, it's gone. And we don't have cannot be frozen anymore, which is not good. This is just a random ring I found. A bunch of strength, a little bit of mana, a little bit of max damage. But the big thing is it's got all res. It's got one mana after each kill, and it's got a little bit of magic find. Treachery. This is a great option for us early on. Uh, we get two all assassin skills, a bunch of attack speed, which we need for trap laying. And then it's also got a little bit of cold res and some other good stuff. But the big thing is that it's got two assassin skills on here and a bunch of attack speed. Also, the hit recovery is nice. Uh, we got Lang of Hands. Pretty easy to find. It's my second or third pair that I found, I think, in, in the week. Uh, they're just CNC, but they've got a nice damage to demons um, percentage. Cow King's Hooves. They're just the best that I've found so far. They've got Magic Vine decks. Uh, a little bit of, they slam for a little bit of light res. We can also, I found water walks and silk weaves. There's other options too, but I'm just kind of liking the cow kings. I swapped these out. And then we're using spirit. Uh, two to all skills, bunch of mana, faster hit recovery, faster cast rate. It's spirit, it's broken. Uh, so really, really good early on. And then on swap, we're using a Nyes for the level 11 teleport, basically. And that's about it, 29 ED jewel. And then a bunch of little res and magic find. We are currently at 193 magic find, and our reses are max, so it's fantastic. Our wake of fire is doing 3,700, and our wake of Inferno is doing about eight grand. Oh, not bad. We are hitting uh, the 32 faster cast rate and 110 hit recovery. So this build is actually without all the fancy gear, like on my fully built one. Um, it's, it's doing a great job surviving. It's not dying ever. Shaft off. Uh, we just found this, slammed it, upped it today. We threw an um in there. Tal Rasha's, I'll probably take that out and swap that out since now we have the um on there. And then we've got a bone hue as well. Uh, this we found on our nightmare playthrough uh, from Bale. And so we've got a melee splash, some ED, some, some random stuff in there, but yeah. Uh, minus requirements. It's actually a very heavy requirement item as well. But that's about it, guys. So um, I there is one change, I would say, and that's that we're putting one point into Blades of Ice. One point into Blades of Ice saves our ass in a lot of circumstances. I can actually run Chaos in this build now just with that one, that one point in Blades of Ice. It's incredibly strong. Uh, because of our plus skills on various gear, it's actually level 14. Um... So yeah, it's great. It's awesome. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stop by the Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash it's underscore snugs. Um, come say hi. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I will do my best to get to you guys and answer them. But until then, guys, have a great night. And uh, take it easy. Peace, folks.